Hey, what's up, Camp Nerd fans? This is Ian, and I'm coming back with you for another tutorial after my long break after my surgery. And I am getting back to where I can do normal things, and trust me, back surgery is not something you want to do. And so, uh, during that time, I've been able to look at my YouTube channel, take videos down, do a couple of different things, and so I'm going to start trying to do videos every single day, Monday through Friday, and taking off on the weekends. And so, since I'm back, this is the first tutorial that we're going to do. Now, what we're going to do is a sliding panel, like is in this form right here, you've got eight buttons. This right here is my menu button. And these buttons are the potentially the menu. And so what you're going to do is when you click on this button, it slides over and it hides the menu. Then when you click on it again, it shows the menu again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this out. And what we're going to do is we're going to open Visual Studio. And this is done in Visual Studio 2017. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new WinForms project. And then you're going to be sure that it is Visual uh, C Sharp, uh, Windows Desktop, Windows Forms app. And then we're just going to name this uh, Sliding Panel Tutorial. And then you can save it to wherever if you're just doing this for practicing or if you actually have an app that you're going to do. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this folder sliding panel tutorial. <clears throat> and then we're just going to double click on that and then we're going to add that and then you're going to click OK. And so what we're going to do is I have uh, some notes and everything that I'm going to go by. <clears throat> and this is our form. And what you're going to want to do first in this is you're going to drag in two panels. So what we're going to do is we're going to add two panels. And as you see, there's two panels. All right. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to take... Uh, the background and I'm just going to change it to black and then on this first panel you're going to want to dock <coughs> that panel <coughs> to the right and this is going to be basically the menu panel panel so what you're going to do is you're going to name this as sliding panel. Now also in Visual Studio 2017 they have actually uh, done some new rules and naming so now you have to capitalize the S. If you was to do how we always done, put the lowercase s sliding panel, you're going to get a naming violation and it's going to be underlined. So to get around that you're just going to do sliding. <coughs> Alright now this for right now is done. So next what you want to do is on the second panel you want to come down and do the same thing you're going to dock it to the right and you're going to scale it down and this is where you're going to put your menu button. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a button and we're just going to bring it about midway and we're going to resize this button say to like that, bring it back to where it's in the middle, and then we're going to scale this down a little bit to where it looks a little bit neater, like so. Then on this button, you want to anchor it in the panel to the right, so it'll stay in the middle of this panel when it's expanded, the form is expanded, then you're going to name this <coughs> button as BTN menu or whatever you would like to name it. Be sure to capitalize the first letter 
of each one, capital B for BTN and then capital M for menu. All right, then you're going to come up here and then you are going to erase the button. And then on the drop down, you can use whatever you want. I'm just going to use a period and then hit enter, period, enter, period. This puts three dots. And so then we're going to come back and we're going to choose a font. Let's just do uh, Cambria 10 and bold. It has the three dots there. And then for your button style, flat style, you're going to put it as flat. And you're going to change the context color, the control color, which is the text inside the button, to something where you can see it. We're just going to do like that right there. <coughs> Uh, button face white, I think is what it was. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to add another button, and this time you're going to drag it to your sliding panel, and then I'm just going to copy and paste several buttons in here, like so. We're going to do nine, eight, uh, let's put seven up there, six, five, and then four, and then we'll bring that one like that right there, so let's get rid of that button, <clears throat> and so this right here is your potential menu, you can use whatever you want, so basically we're going to do the same thing, we're going to anchor all these to the right, like so, all right, now you're going to want to drag in a timer, so we have the timer, and we're going to name this timer as TMR uh, Sliding Panel, <clears throat> and you're going to leave everything else the same. So we're going to click off. All right, this is all we need right here to kind of get into what we're going to do. So first... We're going to go ahead and add the button click event by double clicking on it. Then we're going to add the timer. This takes you to the code. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to define some variables, ints and bools and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do int pw, and then we're going to add bool hide. And this gives us PW, which is the panel width, and then the bool is the hide, gives us whether it's hidden or not. So then we're going to come down to the under the initialize component, and we're going to define what PW is. And PW is the sliding panel dot width, <coughs> and then your hide is equal to to false. Now, you can put this as true, and the difference between having this false and true is if you have hide equals false, then when you start the application, the menu will show you click it and it closes down. If you have it set to true, then you're just going to have the menu button with the three dots like we did. You click on it and the menu extends out. So to give that functionality, in the uh, TMR sliding panel time event, we are going to add if hide, and then this is also going to be an else. <clears throat> so we're going to set it up like this right here. So in the if hide section of the if statement, we are going to put uh, sliding panel dot width is equal to sliding panel dot width plus 20. <clears throat> All right, now under that, we're going to do another if statement, and we're going to put if, and then we're going to do uh, sliding panel dot width is greater than or equal to PW, 
Now we're going to set what the panel does, and which is uh, with the uh, uh, TMR panel slide and stuff like that. So you're going to put in uh, TMR sliding panel dot stop, and what this does is it stops the timer, and it lets it know that it is completely open. And then under that, we are going to put hide equals false because it is not hidden. And then we're going to have to refresh that. So we're going to put this dot refresh like that. <clears throat> now, to save some time, you can just basically copy and then you're just going to paste it down here in the else statement. Now you're going to have to change a few things, like for example, you've got plus 20 up here, now this is going to be minus 20, and then instead of it being greater than, it's going to be less than equal to zero, and then you're going to leave the TMR sliding panel dot stop, then you're going to put this as true. So now we have the functionality and everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the project <clears throat> and we're going to see if the functionality that we want is there. Alright, so now as you see all the buttons are here and even when you expand they're all kind of in line right there. So when you click the button you see how nothing happens with the button. All right. What we forgot to do is wire up our button click event, which is easy. You're just going to reference the TMR sliding panel dot start. <coughs> All right. So now, since you have the TMR sliding panel dot start, what this does is when you click on the button menu click event, it's going to trigger the TMR sliding panel dot start void method event and what it's going to do is it's going to execute all of this code within it so you don't have to have long codes and different things you can just call the event that you want the code to be executed so once we start we're going to minimize Visual Studio so here it is as minimized you click the button and you see it hides it now, if you was to expand, the menu button stays there, so forth, and then when you click the button again, it brings the menu back out. <clears throat> so this is how you do the functionality of a sliding panel. Now, let's say that you want it as uh, not to the side, but you want it to the top or the bottom, then basically what you would do is you would define the int pw as the height and then you would change everything to where it's width you would change all the widths to heights and then you would get the functionality of it being up and down <clears throat> and so this is how you do a sliding panel on WinForms, and this is Visual Studio 2017 is what I created this in. If you have any uh, questions about how the functionality of this works, then you can leave them in the comment section below. And then also, uh, if you would like to see more tutorial videos on this, then you can uh, request them in the comment section, and I will get around to doing it. And as always, this is Ian with Camp Nerd. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And I will see you in the next tutorial. And always remember, keep it nerdy in the camp. All right, I'll see y'all guys in the next video.